Good morning. All of us are familiar with the hymn, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? There's no place for us to turn at this hour other than to the Lord. The incidences of violence, both near and far, both news making and news overlooked, make it clear that our nation is faced with crisis and is in need of remedy. That remedy must begin with a return to spirituality and a fundamental faith in God. Historically, the African American church has been at the center of all positive change in our community and our nation. We must reclaim that position of responsibility and service by abandoning stale rhetoric, laying aside personal animus, and rolling up our sleeves in a commitment to the common task before us, that of building community and developing mutual respect for each other. Formal groups are not essential to this cause, but rock solid resolve is. The African American churches of our community, regardless of denomination or theological perspective, should be seeking ways to come together with a singular message. Violence in any form, targeted at any individual or group is antithetical to the love mandate of Christ and should not in any way be tolerated. That remedy must include very difficult, raw, and sustained dialogue that includes all aspects of our community, all races, all socioeconomic classes, all generations, all communities of faith, all academic backgrounds, all geographic sections, all political philosophies. As African American churches dialogue with themselves, they must also make the intentional effort to dialogue and develop interdependent relationships with people who are not us, but share the same space with us. That dialogue must include a call for more equitable treatment across our community. There needs to be a thoughtful and strategic infusion of economic resources into impoverished areas for the benefit of all. There needs to be a recommitment to jobs, job training, and business investment in those parts of the city that lack such for the benefit of all. There needs to be an intentional investment in the development of more and better facilities that address chemical dependency issues that are so prevalent in our community for the benefit of all. Sustained dialogue is the only way to constantly remind ourselves that for our community to achieve that potential with which God has graced it, we must not leave any part of it behind, but must work to bring everyone along together for the benefit of all. If we can come together to build trams along Nicholson Drive and build railway systems between Baton Rouge and New Orleans, if we can utilize tax increment financing to build hotels in downtown Baton Rouge and fishing retail outlets in the outlying parishes, then surely we can come together and develop an economic plan that benefits the poor and underserved of our community. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that there is nothing new about poverty. What is new, however, is that we have the resources to get rid of it. But resources mean nothing if there is not will and intention for the benefit of all. Violence does not come from nothing. It's not inherent to our DNA. Violence erupts from a sense of anger that is allowed to fester and infect the human heart, devolving into hopelessness, isolation, and utter despair. Violence is the unacceptable, inappropriate, and destructive product of fear at the lack of control we have over our own fate, immediate and long range. It must not be tolerated, but neither can the issues that caused it simply be ignored and left unexamined. To do such is to assure that violence will continue. These are times of disharmony, disunity, and disrespect. It is my prayer that we as a church and as a part of the larger faith community will not just want to be informed, but motivated to be instruments of unity and instruments of healing. Our call as Christians 
Our call as fellow citizens of goodwill is a call of service. It is a call to help lift the fallen and buttress the burden. It is a call to live love rather than just talk about it. It is a call to move out of comfort zones and reach across artificial boundaries. It is a call to blaze trails and provide avenues by which we can all realize our potential. To serve involves a willingness to risk, to dare to be misunderstood, to affirm the worth of others by standing shoulder to shoulder with them against those forces that seek to demean their personhood. But to serve must also mean that we are always open to relevant, meaningful, and purposeful dialogue so that the cause of community may be strengthened and harmony may be affirmed. We must organize and serve to make a positive contribution. We must commit to working with people of every belief, every race, every hue, preferring to highlight those things that unite us rather than those that divide us. God bless you, Shiloh.